everyone, happy December. If you're new here, what's up? My name's Elise, welcome to my channel. If you're not new, welcome back. I love having you here. Thanks for stopping in again. Today we're talking about all the books that I read in November. I have had a pretty good reading month. I started off the month with challenging myself to finish a bunch of books that I was in the middle of. So look forward to that vlog coming soon. And that went pretty well. It took a little longer than I wanted it to. So I didn't get to quite as many of the books on my November TBR as I wanted to, but I did get to a few. So let's get into it. I would love to know your favorite read of November so far. Also, if you've read any of these books, I would love to know your ratings and your thoughts on them as well. Please let me know in the comments. The first book I read in November, which was not part of the plan, was Escaping Peril by Tui T. Sutherland. It is the eighth book in the Wings of Fire series. I am a nanny part-time, so the boys that I watch and drive home and stuff from school were interested in listening to it. So we listened to a majority of this together, and then I read the other parts in between at home. So that was pretty fun. I really enjoyed Peril's point of view. If you don't know about this series, it follows some young dragons, or what they call dragonettes, and just some of their misadventures, mysteries, and problems in their world and their life. This one follows Peril. She has something wrong with her scales that makes her super, super hot, and most things that she touch burst into flames, so she has to be very careful about that. She's always very anxious about that. People treat her differently, um, but she's also very sassy and funny. She doesn't know how to talk or respond to people, so this was really fun. She's also part of the first few books in the series, so it was really nice to see her get her own story. Then I finally got to Cemetery Boys by Adrian Thomas. I started listening to it, and the style that the narrator narrated in was not my favorite. There were kind of longer pauses in between some words and phrases and for some reason that just drives my brain insane. But I was able to get into this. I think the reason I didn't finish this sooner is because I was just picking it up when I had time and this book I absolutely recommend you reading when you have a larger chunk of time to get into the story and into the lore and the history. I thought the world building was excellent. I felt very into it. I loved just how flushed out each character was. My one complaint about this book was I feel like with most kind of mystery books, you get little hints dropped in there, little nuggets to keep you going, and I feel like we really didn't get any idea or clue about what was actually going on, what the mystery was that was going on until like literally the very end. And that bothered me a little bit, but overall I still really enjoyed this book. A very solid four star read for me. I loved Yadriel and I loved Julian, Maritza. I just, I loved the gang. It was a good time. And I really liked the ending. Cemetery Boys follows Yadriel who is wanting to become a brujo but they're trans and their family is not very accepting of them becoming one of these brujos who helps spirits move on to the next to the next move on <laughs> so their family is not very supportive so they're kind of trying to do it themselves behind the scenes and when they do this sort of mysterious disappearance of their cousin occurs at the same time they summon a spirit of the resident bad boy of the school and so Yadriel just knows that there's some sort of connection so he takes it upon himself to go and try and solve the mystery. Oh my gosh. All My Rage by Sabati here. This was so good. Five stars. I think this might be my top read of the year. These two are part of that reading vlog that I was mentioning where I try to finish a bunch of my current reads. So I'm not going to say too much about this. That video should be out soon, but this was so good. I'm so impressed by Sabati here's ability to write a melancholic story about difficulties and trauma and yet weave humor into the story in a not kishy way like just in a natural way i love these characters so much i'm gonna keep it at that because <laughs> i could talk a lot about this book all my rage follows two t 
teenage characters, I think they're 17 or 18, named Noor and Salahuddin. Their families are immigrants and it kind of shares their stories about how they came to America, how they had been treated, some of their family struggles, and their friendship together. That sounds so melancholic and difficult and tough, and, and there are moments like that, but there are also moments of joy and love and friendship and community in this book. It's just a really well-woven story. Then we have the Roma, the history of the Romani people by Charles River editors. This is just brief history of the Romani people. I'm not going to give this a star rating. It's a history book. I learned a lot about it and just what the Romani people have been through. It was not an easy read, but I'm glad to have more understanding and more history um, under my belt. Then I listened to Thank You For Listening by Julia Whalen. I started this in the spring or the summer y'all and I just could not get through it. Finally, I just sped it up really quickly and I was kind of able to get over the kind of reading slump it had me in. I'm not gonna go too much into it. Again, it's in that reading vlog coming out soon. But I will say that I had issues with the pacing and I think it was more of like a women's fiction with a subplot of romance. I wouldn't really call this a romance book. I don't regret finishing it or listening to it, but it just wasn't my favorite. Then we have The House Witch by Delamac. I read this on my Kindle and I will be continuing this series. It was so cozy. I absolutely loved Finn, our main character. And in this world, witches' powers are normally tied to elements like fire, air, water, earth. But some of them have kind of mutated and evolved into different kinds of powers. And so our main character's powers revolve around the house. So he gets a new job as the chef, the head chef at the castle of this kingdom and there are just so many misadventures so many fun characters i just loved some of the lessons our characters learn some of the misadventures they get up to there's a subplot of romance that's really sweet i laughed so much reading this book a solid 4.25 star read for me then i read one true loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid on Kindle. I zoomed through this in two days. It was good. It was just so smooth. I was just sucked into the story immediately and I was so stressed. This story follows our main female character who married her high school sweetheart, her best friend. A year after they're married on their wedding anniversary, he disappears in a helicopter crash and is announced dead. Naturally, our main character is devastated. The grief is incapacitating, so she moves back with her family until she can kind of get back on her feet again and then ends up kind of living this life that originally she thought she had never wanted and now it's perfect for her and she meets someone else and she's engaged to him and then she gets a call that they found her husband and he's alive and he comes back into her life. Taylor Jenkins Reid really knows how to write emotion into a book so that you can just feel it. This story reminded me a little bit of Maybe in Another Life which I listened to earlier this year and absolutely loved. I think maybe if I had read One True Love's first, I don't know, I think it's a toss up because I think whichever one of those you read first, you're going to love more because they have similar themes and dynamics in them. So I think that's why I can't quite give One True Loves a 5 star, very solid 4 star, maybe even a 4.25 star read for me. But again, they have those similarities to them so that I think whichever one you read first is gonna be the favorite. Then I listened to the third book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series called Barbarian Lover. This follows Kira and Ihako. I have already read this whole series back in like 2020 or 2021 
and absolutely loved it. So I started listening to it because most of the series is available on the Audible library. So I've been slowly working my way through the series again. When I originally read the series, I didn't love Kira. I thought she was a little whiny. I don't know, there's only so much like lack of confidence I can take from a character. But listening to the story this time around, I realized that Kira had insecurities and lack of self-confidence in areas, but she still did stuff. You know, she still tried and went out of her comfort zone. So the second reread, I really appreciated her more because I've had a handful of books this year where the characters lack that self-confidence, they're so self-flagellating, and then they do nothing about it. And I can't stand that. <laughs> um, but Kira, she had her insecurities, but she did something. Anyway, she did something about it, and I, I can appreciate that. I also love Ihako. He is one of my book boyfriends. I just love him. He knows when to make you laugh. He knows when to comfort you, and he's just super flirty. And I just, I love that. Next, I read Just on the Road by Jodi Thomas. This technically is the fourth book in the Harmony series. I had no problem just jumping right into it. You could tell that there was a little bit of history for these characters, but I thought Jodi did a really good job of weaving it into the story so that you understood and didn't feel out of the loop. She did a fantastic job with the multiple points of view, which is usually not my favorite. Beyond two points of view, we're getting a little, but she did a great job. By the end of the story, I ended up loving most of the characters and really caring for them. This story follows a doctor who ran away from home from her controlling father, a farmer or a rancher who recently lost his wife and basically is just existing. We have a teenage boy who is working on becoming a musician and so we get to see some of his first experiences with women and what he learns from that. We get a young girl who I recently learned is like the main character of the first book of the series. If I start at the beginning, I would really get to see their journey. So maybe I'll start at the beginning uh, for the next book. But this young woman who recently lost her uncle and inherited his farm and just she's having some struggles with her best friend. This whole book does kind of have a melancholic vibe to it, but it is also hopeful. I loved the community in this story. Um, there is a little bit of romance between the doctor and the rancher and that one was really well paced. It had me just like wanting more so badly. There's also a little bit of mystery in this story too and I thought that was really well done and paced out. I just really enjoyed this. I had a good time reading it. A very solid four star read for me. I finally read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I tandem listened to it and physically read it. Travis Baldry also narrates it and does an excellent job. He is fantastic with giving each character a very unique voice. This book was such a vibe. There wasn't a huge amount of plot. There was some. It was very slow going, but it was just so wholesome and cozy. I didn't want it to end. I want to go and immediately pick up the next book, even though very soon you're gonna see a physical TBR update from me and you are going to be like, Elise, you need to calm down on buying books. I know, I do, but I still wanna go and buy the prequel to this book. <laughs> I just wanna be in this world again. This book follows Viv, who is an orc who used to be a mercenary. Viv is really ready to put that lifestyle behind. She just wants something more. She wants to be able to sleep in the same place for more than a night or two. She wants to make friends where her whole friendship is not surrounded by slaying people or going on these quests for coin. So she creates a coffee shop. It's a very found family. It's like if the Home Improvement Channel was a book in a fantasy world. It's like a warm cup of coffee on a cold day that just like internally warms you. I'm really having a hard time rating this one because the writing in the story is a very solid four stars, but the coziness and the vibe and just the enjoyment of it, we're really playing with like a 4.5 to a five star read because of the element of coziness. 
Okay, my friends, these next two I have not completed quite yet, but I am filming this a little bit early. First, we have Talons of Power, which is the ninth book in the Wings of Fire series. We're following the main character, Turtle, and I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting through it because Turtle is one of those characters with lots of insecurities and says that he can't do this, this, and that, and he wishes this happened, and he wished he could do this, but then he doesn't do anything. Most of the story is through his eyes, but he doesn't do very much. So, not my favorite of the series so far. But, we're about halfway through and the number of words per page is really short. It's usually a really fast read, so I think I'm going to be able to finish this by the end of the month. Then, we have The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. I don't want it to end! I have likened this to the same vibe or tone as The Sea of Tranquility, which I absolutely loved. I gave it a five star earlier this year, and it has that similar tone, that riding style that just really sucks you in, even though it's a little bit slower. I have fallen absolutely in love with the two main point of view characters in this story, and I am terrified of what's going to happen to them. I am terrified. I, it's just this world is not a happy world. It's kind of post-apocalyptic almost. This world has a virus from flies. They are like rabid beast bees that swarm around and eat anything that's alive, basically. Our main female character, Nico, she gets sent on a quest by her father because he used to be a scientist and kind of knows about what's going on. He said, I need you to find this. This might help save us. So she's on this journey kind of runs into another group of kids and things just go from there. It's so good. I don't want it to end and I think that's why I've been kind of dragging it along. I'm also listening to it on audiobook and the narrator is phenomenal. I think that this is gonna be a five star read for me. I think it's gonna be five star. I still have about a little less than 150 pages so a lot could still happen that would make it not a five star read, but I really think it's going to be five stars for me. So anyway, these two I haven't quite finished yet, but I really do think that I'll be able to finish them before the end of the month. And if not, you'll still hear about them in my end of the year wrap up, which you should be seeing sometime this month. All right, my friends, it has been a pretty good reading month so far. I've had some excellent reads, a top favorite of the year another top favorite of the year, a book I've been wanting to read for forever, we're getting some work done on the series, another potential five-star read, a solid four-star read. It's been a good month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my November wrap-up. Again, I would love to know your thoughts if you've read any of these books in the comments, as well as your favorite read of November. Sending you good vibes always, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.